Peggy 3. Welcome back to the latest developer diary for F1 2010. Our art director Michelle and his team have really been able to recreate the assets exactly as they are in real life. The cars, the, the circuits, hospitality, environments, trucks, paddock assets. So the first stage in creating a car and game is to collect all the reference. Uh, we get basic CAD data from the teams in terms of wheelbase lengths or any of the other technical information on the car itself. We supplement that with photography and livery packs. So basically it's, it's all the information we're going to need to recreate the real life F1 car in game. Stage 2 is basically all about importing the CAD and building the 3D mesh. All the external visible parts such as suspension are all modelled individually so that they behave correctly in the game. Uh, similarly parts that we want to break off in crashes are also modelled separately. That includes internal components as well, so uh, basically they can be revealed uh, behind damage or in a big crash. So the end result is a very detailed wireframe 3D render of the car. The next stage is all about texture in the model, so essentially painting the car. Uh, for that we create a, a decal sheet with all the areas of the car laid out on it, and this is effectively pasted onto the mesh model, which creates a car that looks as close as possible to the real thing. Once it's in game we basically set up the suspension components so everything articulates correctly, and uh, tweak all the individual components so that they fit together correctly during a damage sequence. So what this really means is that each of the cars handles slightly differently. So if you're playing in a Red Bull or HRT, you can actually feel the differences come through in, um, in feedback around the corner, down the streets, the differences in arrows, the differences under braking, turn in, under steer, over steer, all these kind of things are actually feed back in through the actual model of the car. The better cars in the field out there, they're not necessarily easy to drive, but they just do what you want a little bit easier. Audio obviously plays a massive part in any game, but particularly in F1. One of the most important aspects from an audio point of view has got to be the sound of the cars. We've been working with some of the manufacturers and teams who have been helping us get access to their vehicles to allow us to record these sounds. What you're hearing in the game is the sound of the car on the track. One thing that we noticed when we were recording these cars was that one car sounds like three or four cars going around the track. We've got a system in there now that, which is working in real time where we model out the buildings and we say what material types of buildings are made out of so reflections can be brighter or dark, duller. And of course, the distancing is calculated in real time as well. So it really gives you a sense of sound bouncing around. Creating the tracks for Formula One 2010 is an amazing challenge really because you can assume that the the people playing the game are the most knowledgeable people out there. We're getting fantastic access to, to materials. We get as up-to-date CAD as we can achieve. We've got fantastic photo reference. The photographers are over there sort of like walking the track literally every five meters, taking images left, right, center. You want to experience that track as though you're driving around it in a real world situation. So there's a lot of emphasis goes into making sure that this track feels like it's embedded in a bigger landscape. You're actually, you know, in Monaco. You know, this thing is all about making you feel like you're there. So having um, Ant come in every, every few weeks has really allowed us to, to go beyond the, the data that we're given um, and actually enhance the tracks uh, that much further. So obviously driving the real world circuits enables me to give that impression to the guys creating the game and there's all these details around the circuits where we go to around the world that only the driver would know about. So for instance turn 8 in Spa, I know straight away any car I've ever driven there always understeers as it plummets downhill around the sharp right hander and it's knowing that kind of detail as a driver that you can get over into the game as well. Uh, we're making a big push for the atmosphere in this game, certainly with the grandstands and the, and the characters in the, in the crowd. We actually want to make sure that the, the track becomes more populated as you go through the weekend. So we have the flags, we make sure that the banners reflect maybe the locations. Practice, fewer people are turning up, qualifying starts to get busy, race day is absolutely packed. When you can see all the crowds cheering in there and the flag waving, it really adds quite a lot to the atmosphere of the game. The circuits feel really spot on, so it's, it's good to see.